Morning School and welcome to Heritage Day. It's welcome to Day then. Our first speaker, Sebastian. It's really good to, to be at a school with such a diverse crowd. Um, I came in today and I saw people from different cultures, uh, different heritages. Um, it's good to see there are Zulus, there are vendors, there are people with saris. And then, of course, the massive uh, people representing the hip-hop culture today. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> a deep sense of love and belonging is an irreductible need of all people. We are biologically, cognitively, physically, and spiritually wired to love, to be loved, and to belong. When those needs are not met, we don't function as we are meant to. We break. We fall apart. We numb. We ache. We hurt others. And we get sick. So I'd like to encourage you to, to love each other, to respect each other, to appreciate each other, and to create that sense of community um, within the school and within your community. I'd like to thank you for your time and your attention. I hope that you, you gathered a little something out of the talk today. Thank you, school. I love my culture because it's my identity, if you know what I mean. And, um, I think that it's very um, vibrant, it's very cool, like there's a lot of things that you can do as a city person. Um, I, I just like my culture a lot. We come from all over, there's Portuguese, Israeli, Bulgarian, um, I was born in South Africa, my dad was born in Zimbabwe, um, yeah it's pretty uh, diverse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Tosa and Sutu but I'm wearing my Tosa clothes today. I am Zulu and Dwana, but today I'm wearing my Zulu clothes. The culture that I'm wearing is basically, these are my granny's beads. They're from her wedding skirt, so it's Zulu culture. And then my stepdad's Nigerian, so he got this material for my head wrap. Myself as a half Betty, half Dwana girl, but um, my outfit doesn't really represent anything besides my duk and my beads are from the Betty culture. Muraho. Muraho. Yes. Um, uh, so we have one hour and it's not enough, okay? I was invited to share my stories, my experience, but it can take, I don't know, days and days, okay? So I'm going to try something and we're going to be very interactive. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think it's a choice I made just to contribute to peace and to be peaceful myself. Um, um, I could have chosen a different path, being bitter and teach hatred and revenge and other things. Um, but that is very hurtful and painful <laughs> for me and Physiologically, biologically, there are even scientific proof that those emotions, negative emotions, affect our body as well. Yeah, so I'm actually happy that I chose uh, this peaceful uh, path. I'm going to tell you my name, and I want you to say my name loudly three times after I've said it. Okay, you ready? My name is Robert. The next thing after that, after a name in an identity, is one's gender. What it feels like when your body is somewhere else and you are operating inside of a system that is not making you feel like you belong there. This is about my body. I have to change my body. And what am I going to do? So you have to go out in society, choose a new name, tell people um, uh, this is that you're a man now and try and convince everybody that you're a man. I felt that was a very useless exercise because all I experienced was how people will treat you when they don't know your gender. And then I had hormone treatment. Um, I had injections of testosterone. Facial hair started growing and it wasn't just the facial hair. It's also how fat 
gets melted away by testosterone around your eyes, around your jawbone. And I distinctly realized that my eyes had changed, that my gaze had changed. I'm a white man, I'm privileged, I'm a male, and I'm heterosexual, and I have a wife and a child. But there are many trans people that are not privileged and are unable to change their lives. Yeah, I've had so much pain as a transgender person. And then I remembered that that was never my lesson as a transgender person. My lesson was the response humans had to me and how beautiful most people were. And that all people have some kind of pain and some kind of challenge to go through. And if we can see that in one another, that everybody deserves this letter, I think we're going to have a bit more of a peaceful world. Thank you very much. That's it. The Rwandan genocide really put things into perspective because we've all studied it in grade nine um, and you know we all understood that it was a bad thing but like today we really got it really put it in perspective of how much it has affected the people who were in the actual genocide. And I love that his lecture was centered around the, a, a place of happiness and the fact that he realized that the past was sad but he has decided to move past it and actually change it as a means of healing other people. So that was really exciting. My favorite one was the LGBTI talk. Um, I really felt that the, the, the guy who spoke to us, his story was really inspiring. I feel that everybody should have talks about their culture, embrace their culture, um, tell everybody that you can about your culture and enjoy who you are. Uh, this country should change and everyone should stop fighting instead and you know, we should like just come together as a country. Life is beautiful, our heritage is beautiful, um, culture is beautiful. I just want to say thank you to everyone who organized this, especially Mr. Broad. I know he put in a lot of effort into this. What I enjoy about Heritage Day is that it's a step closer to the truth about the Rainbow Nation. We are trying to um, put together the, all the cultures that make up our beautiful country. So today is a oh, Heritage Day. is a nice day to really just celebrate all the cultures that put together our country. <laughs>